have everything you need to move forward in this new season. And so what I want to share today is that if you're at a pivotal moment, and you want to pivot purposefully and not haphazardly, if you're entering into a season of change, whether it was caused by the pandemic that we're in, or you're just at a place in life where I was three or four years ago, or let me say two or three years ago, where life had brought unexpected changes and you knew that you were tired of being in an expired season and life forced your hand the way it often does, then how do you change? How do you move forward purposefully? Because God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. Even when it, when unexpected change comes, even when things look like they're failing, even when it looks like a season and it's over, even when you have planned your life a certain way and you thought it was going to turn out and things didn't turn out the way you thought they would, in, not only in your life, but in your business, you know, or in your ministry, life has a way of throwing curve balls. And so... The race is not given to the swift. It's, it doesn't matter how you start. It doesn't matter what life hands you. It's how you handle it and what you do with it and how you move forward that matters. And so how are you going to move forward in this season? So take some time if you are that person and you are... Um, if you got a whole bunch of ideas and a whole bunch of plans and a whole bunch of things that are coming forward, pause and pray about it. Get before the Lord because he has a path for you. He has what the Bible calls a derrick. It's a path. It's a path that he has for you to move forward where it becomes brighter where there's blessings on that path and so god wants to bring us into a new future regardless and again last week i think i talked about it and i i talked about ruth ruth was at and she's one of my favorite people in the bible maybe identify with her because so many things had changed in her life but yet she chose to move forward there were different paths before ruth and she could have moved for she could have gone back and sometimes well-meaning people will tell you to stay where you're at to go back her mother-in-law naomi who loved her told her to go back home where she could marry a husband and she could find rest in the house of her husband because moving forward was going to be a risk. But Ruth thought about it and Ruth decided that the risk was worth the reward to move forward. She said, where you go, I will go. Where you die, I will die. Your people shall be my people. And Naomi told her, like, I can't have another husband. And if I do have a husband, you, are you going to wait for a uh, son for me to have, first of all, a son? And then second of all, for that son to grow up. First, I got to find a husband. Then I have to have children. And then I have to have a son. And then that son has to grow up. Up and you have to wait for him to get married. This is unrealistic, Ruth. But Ruth decided to go the way of God. She could have went back to her idols. She could have went back to um, Moab where they served idol gods, but she moved forward in faith. She had a, a, defiant, a defiant faith almost. She was a risk taker. It's actually the word courage. She moved forward in faith courage she moved forward in courage and she pushed forward regardless of the fact that it would have been easier to stay where she was at it would have been easier to go back to her parents and and um and marry somebody to marry someone in, in her in her um in her hometown of moab to just find a husband and and have a life but she went forward and Ruth's name means friend she went forward as a friend to Naomi where Naomi had been a, a friend to her who had showed her um, God and how to have faith in God because Naomi continued to believe in the Lord even when her husband died even when her sons died she went back to where her people 
were. She went back to where the people of God was. She said the Almighty has dealt this hand to me. So she still believed in God. She still trusted in his sovereign hand. And she was willing to take what she even thought was him, even though it wasn't God, and that he was using what was evil to turn around for her good. She still took this. Naomi still took this. And so Ruth had watched Naomi's faith. She had seen something in Naomi. And so she chose to move forward instead of going back or staying stuck in an expired season. She chose to move forward, not knowing what was ahead of her, but knowing that the God who loved and saw her, the God of Naomi, was going to be her God. And so sometimes God brings you to a place where you're at a divine intersection of change, and he propels you, he pushes you forward. And in that moment, you can choose to go back, you can choose to stay stuck, or you can choose to move forward into something new. And you may not even know what the new is going to entail. But if God before you, who can be against you? So Naomi moved for, excuse me, Ruth moved forward and she went with her mother-in-law when she was in that divine intersection of change between what was and what could be. And I like to say what could be because we get to choose our future. God does a lot of things for us, but a lot of things he leaves up to us. We choose who we marry, whether it's for better or worse. We choose who we choose where we fellowship. We make choices for life and those choices, life is about the choices that we make, right? And so Ruth made a choice to move forward instead of going back and having an easy life and uh, going and having a husband. She tried, But she didn't know. She took a risk. And sometimes when we take a risk, we don't know. But we have to calculate. We have to count the cost. And Ruth counted the cost in that moment. She counted the cost and she said, I'm going to go with you. Your God shall be my God and your people shall be my people. And where you die, I will die. She counted the cost and she saw that, hey, this may not work out where um, I may not get a husband. I may be a widow because I'm moving forward with my mother-in-law and she may not ever find a husband. Ha, my God, she may not ever have another son. She may not. I may, but I want to be a friend to her. I want to serve this woman. And when we move in the direction of the right thing, when we move in the direction of serving others and loving others, and we don't always put ourselves first, then God has a blessing for us on the other side of that. So here she was, Ruth, moving forward in a way that was right. It wasn't her best option, or at least she didn't think so, because in that moment, would have what would have been best for her, which would have served that, which would have served her best, would have been to choose to go back and find a husband and do all these different things. But what she chose to do instead was to serve somebody else. She chose a direction that was not self-serving. My God, that's a word all in itself. So in her prayerful in intersection, and I don't know that she prayed in that moment, but I do know that she counted the cost because Ruth, because Naomi told her what it was going to cost her. She said, you may not have a husband. If you go back, you can have a husband. You can have a life. You can have rest in the house of your husband. But if you move forward with me and you go, if you take this path, this is what's before you. But because she chose something that was not self-serving, but she chose to go in the way where she served her mother-in-law. God had something for her. It was divinely orchestrated. And this is why we need to pray. This is why we need to pause and pray and have a time of prayerful intersection when we're at an intersection of change to look back at where we were where we've come from and how we got there. And I believe that Ruth had time to do that, even though the Bible doesn't say that. I don't know if she did it, but I know that if she had looked back, she would have seen that, okay, what was be behind her was Moab. What was behind her was 
women, I mean, was a life of serving idols, of serving idol gods, of idol worship. If she found a husband, it was not, she had got a taste of God. She had taste and saw that even though um, Naomi had gone through all these things, the Lord was good. The Lord was good. Even in our bad days, God proves that he is good. And so she had saw that and she looked back the prayerful introspection, hindsight, and saw that there was nothing behind her that was better than what was before her. She looked in herself and she saw that she was strong enough to move forward, that she trusted and had enough faith and courage to move forward. That's introspection. So she looked inside of herself. And then she looked forward and she counted the cost. She looked at the risk of what was it was going to take to move forward. And even though it wasn't the choice that most people would take, people would, well, her, even her mother-in-law, her well-meaning mother-in-law told her to go back. Her well-meaning mother-in-law told her to go back to Moab where she could find a husband, where she could do this. But she chose to move forward. She chose to move forward forward without knowing what was going to come. But what came, beloved, what came was Boaz, what came as a, as a result of her serving her mother-in-law, of a, as a result of her choosing not what was self-serving, but what was going to be a blessing to other, taking a risk and going with God instead of going what would have worked for her. And a lot of times, listen, for me, that's why I had to pause. I had to pause because in that moment when life hadn't served me, when I was like Naomi, when I saw that it looked like the Almighty had dealt bitterly with me, when it looked like things had failed in my life, when it looked like my dreams, I had a lot of un broken dreams and and things that hadn't turned out the way I had thought they would just like Naomi I had to pause because if I wouldn't have paused then I would have began to do things that were self-serving and not stayed in line with God and that's a popular mes message these days what self self-care self-motivation and all these things and hey I get it and I and I sometimes I want to do it but that's not the way that we learned Christ right so when where I'm talking about taking the reins I'm talking about taking control of yourself listening to um, your inner self and hearing that that moment of God hearing God speak to you and choosing for yourself which way taking responsibility and ownership of your future and choosing the best and the right direction that you should go and not being moved by your emotions not being moved but but um, what is it called intentional making intentional and purposeful and wise decisions about your future when you're at this intersection of change and so with that being said she was here ruth was at this place and she could have chosen a self-serving purpose but she chose to serve somebody else and like i said i was there i was there where i was um you know upset you know i was like like naomi had said call me bitter because hey the almighty has dealt with me in this way but what i found is that as i paused that's the first thing and then i prayerfully looked at what i could do what god was saying to me i had a time of prayerful introspection taking ownership of my stuff if you're saying something okay oh hey good afternoon and then i'm i'm seeing comments and then i had to pause and when i paused and had a time of prayerful introspection i didn't rush forward into what i wanted to do i i i me 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 because me would have done you know, things that would have been, um, hey, I want to, I want to do everything right now. I want to live a little just for me. And God does want us to, he wants to give us the desires of our heart and he wants us to be happy and he wants us to have joy, but there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. And so when we, when you're at that moment and life hasn't turned out the way you planned and you are deciding your future don't just think about let me how can i say this don't just think about what you haven't gotten and what how you're gonna be happy think things through and take the route that god shows you 
look backward and see. And I don't mean as in he who looks back as, as lost, but when you take in hindsight and you review where you've been, And that's how people moved forward in the Bible. They looked at the scriptures. They looked at what had happened and what had been spoken and what God's purpose and plan was for their life. And so when the Messiah came, when we're waiting for prophecy now, we're waiting on the word of God. We look back at history so that it does not repeat itself. So looking back, hindsight is so important. You learn so much when you look back, not to relive it, but to review it so that you can understand what, what, where you made mistakes and what, what, what didn't work. And then looking inward. And then from that place of understanding what your past was, where you're at right now, then take that and look forward. Because that takes the emotion and the, and the you know, self-centeredness out of it. And then you get to say, God, what is right and best? And know that God has a good plan for you, that he wants you to be happy. He wants you to be blessed. And he has a good plan for your life. And just like Naomi, just like Ruth, sometimes when we take the high road, it count and we, we, Jesus said, count the cost of following him. Sometimes it looks high hard, but there was a blessing in disguise. God was working it out for her. Had she chosen to go back to Moab, she would have not entered into the blessing of marrying into the family of what the Messiah was going to come forth. She would not have had Obed. Naomi story would have probably would have been different, but because she chose at that moment, at that intersection of change, at that unexpected, oh my God, I feel something right here. I'm sorry, I'll get to preaching. Um, the unexpected time and chance happens to everyone. I don't know if I'm seeing it. Time and chance happens to everyone. Happy birthday, Elaine. Hallelujah. Time and um, harder, yes, it's easy to rush, but harder to pause. Um, And it's so good to pause and to reflect on what we're doing because the thing is time and chance happens to everyone. So time, divine opportunities that God sends before us, chance, unexpected events. That's what those words mean. When you look up the word in the Hebrew from Ecclesiastes, unexpected events, we all get sapped in the face with things that we didn't it's like a sucker punch when something happens that you didn't know was going to happen that you didn't expect that you didn't plan for ruth hadn't planned for her husband to die even before she had children naomi hadn't planned for her husband to die but in that moment naomi made a choice to go back and ruth could have gone and stayed where she was at but as they walked on the road with her the path with her to wish her well and to tell to her goodbye. And let's talk about Oprah, um, Opa, Orpa for a moment. She was there too. And there's nothing wrong with it, but she made a decision not to move forward. When Ruth, when Naomi told her, listen, you could go back, you can have a husband, you can rest in the house of your husband. You don't have to take this hard road with me. You don't have to risk. You don't have to live a life of risk, the unknown. You don't have to step in. Don't, you know, daughter, don't do it. I love you. They wept together. They cried, but she chose to go back and many people will. And there's nothing wrong with it. If that's where God is leaving you, leading you. But in her case, Nay, Orpah and Ruth both had a decision to make. And Orpah, uh, Ruth, Orpah, Orpah went back home. And we never hear about her again. But Ruth chose in that intersection of change. And an intersection is where there's two or more roads meet. There's it has to be at least two more roads, backward, forward. There can be four roads. There can even be five paths before you. In that intersection, 
She chose to go forward. She chose to take a risk. And what I found is that the risk is worth the reward. Sometimes God is calling us to move forward, to step out on our dreams, to jump out on a ledge and not in a, a way that's like, okay, I um, doing something silly, but in a way that faith is leading you. She had a defiant faith. She said, no, I'm going with you. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going back. I'm going with you. And let me just get my Bible out here real quick so I can read that to you. She had this defiant faith where she said, um, she said, no, I am not going. I'm not going to go back. I am going to move forward with you. And the Bible calls what she did um, uh, courage. It was courageous what Ruth did at the time. So um, sometimes we're afraid of change. Sometimes we're afraid to move forward. So we stay in an expired season too long because it's comfortable because it's easy because we know what to expect even if what we expect and what we and what we're going to get is something that is the same something that is hurtful to us something that keeps us boxed in something that keeps us in the labels and limitations of a past season but we stay in expired seasons we stay in places that are no longer meant for us to be there because it's comfortable because it's easy because we can determine the outcome she knew if she would have went back like naomi told her she would have been able to get a husband she would have been able to have an easy life and find rest in the house of her husband but moving forward was a risk it was a risk and so that's what she chose, but there was a blessing. So I don't know where you're at today, but God is calling us to go into the unknown, to do something uncomfortable, not go in the way of the ungodly, not do something that he hasn't called you to do, but Ruth's faith was in this. And I'm going there. And Ruth 1, eight it says, and Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, go and return each to the house of your mother the lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me ruth 1 8 the lord grant you that you may find rest each of you in the house of her husband then she kissed them and they lifted up their voices and they wept and they said unto her surely we will return uh, with thee with thee unto thy people and naomi said turn again my daughters go back see turn and when you're in that intersection why will you go with me are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters. Again, she says this word to turn back, to go in that direction. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. And if I should have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons, would you tarry? for them till they were grown would you stay for them for having husbands nay my daughter she says for it grieves me it hurts me for your sakes at the hand of the lord has gone out against me she didn't know that the lord was about to change some things in her life naomi didn't know that she said the lord has dealt grievously with me bitterly with me and so go your way and she said behold and so it says um, and they lifted up their voices and they wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave to her. She clung to her. She held on to her. And she said, behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto thy people and unto thy gods. See, her gods. Ruth was like, no, I'm not having it. I'm not going back to those gods. Return after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee or to return. Um, from following after thee for whither thou goest I will go and whither thou lodgest I will lodge and thy people shall be my people and thy God shall be my God and where you die I will die and there I will be buried the Lord do so to me and more also if I ought but to death depart us and when she saw that she was steadfast minded okay that's a word right there that means that she was courageous that she was, she had made a decision. Ruth had taken the reins of her life. She had made a choice for herself. There was two 
roads in front of her. There were two places in front of her to go. Naomi had given her some options. And she said in this moment of at this divine intersection, in this moment of change, even though these unexpected events have um, happen. I choose life. I'm not going back to these dead idols. I'm not going back to the old things I was in. I'm not going back to that life. And it says that she, when Naomi saw that she was steadfast minded, when she saw that she had the courage, that she had committed, that she had established, that she had fortified, that she had made a strong decision and she was obstinate, that's why I call it defiant faith, then Naomi said, okay, come go with me, but it's a risk. We don't know what's going to happen. And so where are you at today, beloved? What, what is before you? What is the path before you? And have you taken the time? I'm going to have to change this this title. I said prayerful introspection, but I think I'm going to have to name this one. Is the risk worth the reward? Are you at an intersection of change like Ruth was? And what are the paths before you? What are, what are your choices? And are you going to make the right choice? Don't take just the easy way. Don't go back to where you were at if God is calling you to move forward forward even if you don't know and sometimes he'll he'll put you in that place where we're back there's nothing behind you for Ruth everything was dead and gone there was no husband back there for Naomi her choice was to go home because it was over so these unexpected events that happen in life these things that come to change us to make us force our hand sometimes God will put um situations in place that forces us to make a decision because he knows the end from the beginning he knows what's in front of us but oftentimes we will even when he makes a way for us we go back orpa went back but ruth chose with all the risk that was in front of her of not knowing what was going to happen, not knowing where she was going to lay her head, how she was going to eat, um, all of these different things. She didn't know how they were going to make a living. She had no idea that she was going to meet Boaz by serving her mother-in-law, by choosing to go in a way that was serving another play, another person. And it wasn't just about serving the other person. It was about following God and following this woman who had a God. Notice Naomi said, go back to your gods, go back to your family, go back to your mom's house. And she said, no, I'm going after your God. She had a taste of the true and living God and she went in that direction. And so what way is the true and living God directing you? Because sometimes it's easy to go in a direction that seems easy. Sometimes it's easy to stay in something that is, that is familiar, to stay stuck, to go back, to do what's easiest. But God doesn't call us to easy. He calls us to faith. If the walk of faith was easy, anybody could do it. But there is risk in giving our lives to Christ and saying, Lord, you lead. There is risk when we take the reins and we choose for ourselves, even when well-meaning pe people tell us to go the easy way. And so what is God calling you to do? What do you need to take control of? How do you need to take the reins of your life and stop allowing life to make decisions for you? So when we wait for life to make decisions for us and make choices for us, then we take whatever life has dealt us or we can choose which direction we will go choose which path we will take and may it will maybe it'll be a path that is harder it will be a path where you don't know where things are going to come from you don't know how things are gonna how you're going to make it but you know that this is the way God is leading you then you have to trust him as Ruth had to trust him and in your trusting God she was working in the field she was working in the field when her life changed in a moment because she was in the right place at the right time. And this is not about a husband. This is Ruth's story. It's so many of our stories. It's not just about a husband. It's about taking the risk, going in the way where maybe it's not all the money. Maybe it's not all the popular. Maybe you're not going to be comfortable. Maybe you're not going to have the things that you're used to. But God is calling you to a new beginning. And it will cost you something. It will cost you hard work. It will cost you serving others. It will cost you doing 
things that you weren't used to doing. It will cost you giving up the life that you once had. But in that new beginning, in this new path that God is calling you to, there's going to be some rewards. There's going to be some breakthrough. If God has called you to it, there's something in the future that he has for you that is going in that direction. And so this is what you want to look at. This is what you want to see. And so a time of prayerful introspection is a time to see what God is speaking to you. First you pause and then you see what God is speaking to you and which way he's leading you because it might not be the way you think it. It's more than likely not the easy route. It's more than likely not the thing that other people are speaking to you. People can confirm to you, but they can't always tell you. Paul said, I conferred not with flesh and blood. When he had to make a decision, he went into the desert and heard what God called him to do. And then he came out and then the apostles began to speak and confirm that he was called after he had his own divine moment, moment with Christ. When God told him which direction to go, to go to the Gentiles, he got that from spending time with the Lord. And so what is God telling you to do? And that wasn't easy. That was not easy, and it wasn't easy to go to the church and to show himself to these people after he had prosecuted the church, but it was what God told him to do, so God won't always call us to easy. Most times he won't, and so God is shaking things up, and he has given us this moment. He's put us on pause. He's given everybody a moment to pause, a time, a season to pause so he can prepare us for this for this revival, for this second thing that he's going to do, for whatever it is that he has planned, he needs his army, his people to be prepared, to be ready, to move forward in new ways, to take new fields, to take new mountains, to do new things, to step out on faith. And Ruth got caught up in the, the, um, in the uh, genealogy of the Messiah. She became part of this tapestry of women who are called to God, who have, who are part of the lineage of Jesus Christ, because she chose a different direction. And so she chose to go the hard way. She chose to go this way. And so as I close, if you want to leave me a comment, if you want to inbox me, let me know what, where you're at right now. What is the divine intersection? What moment of change you're at right now? What is God doing in your life that is different? That is that that He's bringing you to a place of um, of change, to a moment where He wants you to move forward. Have you taken the time to pause? Because pause turns off all those voices. It gives you a chance to get a hold of your emotions. And then prayerful introspection is once you pause and get quiet before the Lord, then you look inward. You look backward to see which, what's behind you. You try and figure out with the Lord which way you're supposed to go. That's what prayerful introspection does for you. And so um, let me know where you're at, whether you send me an email as some of you do or inbox me or comment here. Let me know where you're at. Let me know if this bless you. Um, let me know uh, what, what paths are before you. Let me know how I can pray for you. What is before you? And remember, don't just choose the comfortable. Take it all in through prayer and see what God is is saying to you is the risk worth the reward as i'm pivoting purposefully in this season of life for me i reckon that the risks are worth the reward rewards not to go back not to go with what is easy but to move forward into the unknown with god at the front the the breaker goes before us, the Lord at our head. So I, I reckon that as I follow God, even if I don't have the same comfortable life, even if things are not what I'm used to, even if I have to step out on faith and do things different, that God has a plan for me in my future. And he has a plan for each one of us as we're moving forward, as we're doing new things, as some things have been shut down like they were for Ruth and Naomi. There, was not, there wasn't anything to go 
go to stay for for Naomi. So she could have stayed, but she said, I'm going home. I'm going forward. I'm going back to the place where God first called me. I am going. So it was an old path, huh? an ancient path. My God, <laughs> I'll get to preaching for Naomi. It was going home for her, but it was creating a new home for Ruth. It was creating a new path for Ruth. And it was a new thing for Naomi too, because she didn't know what was ahead of her. So what is the path before you? What is the path? Naomi knew that she would probably starve. She didn't have a husband or a son or anything there. And she knew that she couldn't live with her daughters-in-laws if she had stayed because they would get new husbands and that's who would provide for them. So Naomi's hand was forced, but God was in it because as he forced Naomi's hand to go back, she made a wise decision. She could have stayed there and been a beggar or whatever, but she chose to go back to Bethlehem. But God was working in it because as she chose to go back and her daughter, daughter-in-law followed her because they didn't know what else to do, she gave them a decision. She gave them choices. She laid it before them. The Lord says, choose this day. Um, who you will serve life and death are in the turn uh and in the power of the tongue blessing and curse are before you he always gives us a choice and she put those choices she put two choices before her daughters in law and ruth chose to take the reins even though someone else gave her told her to go a different way so taking the reins is making your own decision and she made the right godly decision and so she took this she made this decision to go this way and God had a plan for her that she could have never thought of. She could have never dreamt of from just following him. And so, beloved, that's my prayer for you and for me, that as we step out on faith, as we take um, risk to and we count the cost and we follow God in this season, even into the unknown, um, she didn't have a dream or a vision she had faith she had faith that she wasn't going back to what was old that she was going to move forward and sometimes that's what it takes like come hell or high water i'm not going back there i'm going forward and i believe that god is going to bless me in my future however that looks i don't know right now she didn't know she began to work in that field and do what she had to do in that season to get by but god had a plan in that and in that plan, he blessed her beyond her wildest dreams. So sometimes it's being faithful, it's moving forward, it's being faithful, it's doing what you have to do in the season that you're in and holding on to hope and serving others and God will do that. So I just pray that you would move forward and not stay in the comfortable. If you know that God is calling you forward in a certain direction, then move forward. Don't stay stuck. Don't don't stay stuck because you could be miss, missing the blessing of God like Orpah found herself missing what God was doing because she chose the easy. She chose the comfortable. But Ruth chose this hard thing and God did something for her that she couldn't have done for herself. He blessed her in ways that was beyond. And so God bless y'all. I know I said I was going to go. I'm getting into trying to do lives at least once a week. I said I was going to do them Tuesday, but I didn't make it yesterday. And so I wanted to come on here and do this today. So look for me next week. I'll be talking about the next step and taking the reins and pivoting into purpose. So we talked about pausing. We talked about prayerful introspection. And next week, I believe it is either, um, I think it, we're going to talk about uh, painting a new picture for your life. Painting a new picture for your life. As you go through all of this, what do you want? Because what happened was, Naomi painted a new picture for Ruth. Naomi said, wait a minute. Oh, you met Boaz? Let me, let me get you dressed. Let me get you going because here's another divine opportunity. Here's another moment. And we have a picture. I can see you finding rest. You didn't go back and find rest, but let me, let me do for you. Let me set you up. Let me fix you up and let me take this opportunity so that you can have a, a husband, so that you can present yourself to this man Boaz and, 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 um, God can bring you into rest. I'm going to I'm going to show you how to do this. So then there's a mentorship there that her mother-in-law did, but in that there was a painting a new picture for life. And so that's the next thing is that you paint a new picture for your life. Naomi got a vision 
and she shared her vision with Ruth and they stepped out on faith. Like she went to a man on the threshing floor. That was not, that's not protocol. That's out of protocol, just like Esther, but she did it because it was a divine God moment and it worked, but we're going to get into that next week. So y'all stay with me. God bless you. I hope this blessed everyone and let me know where you're at. Um, if you missed it, watch the replay. I wish I could. I, I'm going to try and figure out how to download these lives so I can put them on my YouTube channel as well. But God bless you. See y'all next week. Okay.